Hallelujah. Good morning, champions. Welcome to the assembly of the God begotten. We are still on our series on begotten, which we began last week. And last week, if I can quickly touch it, we had said begotten is not a word, it's a reality. The reality of our sonship, the reality of our position in God, the reality of our relationship with God, the reality of our nature. And then we also said that though being begotten is a spiritual reality, its influence can tangibly be seen in every other aspect of life. Today, we're going to begin to look at the realities of the God begotten that you are begotten of God, what are the things you can expect? What, is, what are the things that are yours, rather? What's your reality? The realities of the God begotten. Say this to yourself. I am the God begotten. I have overcome the world. The greater one lives in me. Say it like you understand it. I am the God begotten. I have overcome the world. The greater one lives in me. Turn to somebody and ask that person, what is your native language? Don't say or run. Hold it there. John, face John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. And then we're going to see three scriptures quickly. And first John chapter 4, verse 4. And we'll just stop by Revelation 12 verse 11. We'll not read the Revelation scripture, but we'll read the John scriptures. Let's read it together. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our first. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God. Can we say that together? Ye are of God, little children. Let's do it together. And have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Once you grab these three scriptures and put them in your pocket. You will understand that as the God begotten, one basic reality that you have is that you are an overcomer. If you believe that Jesus is the son of God, you are the God begotten. So don't take the God begotten as what's the big word about. If you are born again, you are the God begotten. So for those that believe that Jesus is the son of God, that's what verse 5 just simply gives the definition. You are the son of God. You're believing. You are the God begotten. Your believing in Jesus makes you one with him and empowers you to win over the ways of the world. This is what the Bible calls the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So because you believe in Jesus, you now become one with him and you partake of his victory over the world. Don't know whether we get that part. So the world as used here is the sum of everything opposed to God. This world has its own native language and culture. The kingdom has its own native language and culture. Let me try to say it a different way. There is a language and culture of the God begotten. And there is a language and culture of the world begotten. Last week we talked about that we are God begotten. We are not blood begotten. We are not flesh begotten. We are not man begotten. So there is a language you have as the God begotten. And there is a language you have as if you are in the world as the world begotten. Your language reflects your reality. While the God begotten speak the language of the chief overcomer himself. That's why that Revelation 12, 11, that I said we will not read because I just want to pick a principle. says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. The faithful testimony of Jesus, which is the word of God, is the power you and I have to overcome the world and destroy the power of the devil. So, you overcome by the word of your testimony. The truth of the word you proclaim over every situation is your overcoming power over the world. So when the Bible says, ye have overcome, ye, ye are of God because 
greater is he that is in you. You will understand by the time I get to the end. The world begotten, on the other hand, are the false prophets. It will make sense very soon. The world begotten are the false prophets John writes about. They speak the language of the prince of this age. A language of defeat. A language of death. So when the devil lies, the Bible says he's speaking his mother tongue. Paul says, make thanksgiving your dialect. Why? He understands that as a God begotten, the, the, the greater one lives in you. So every single time you open your mouth, you are calling forth something and creating a reality. So you cannot claim to say, I have overcome the world when you are constantly repeating the language and the culture of the world. I'm trying to lay foundation for something that will just be very brief. So today I came to ask the God begotten seated in this house today, what is your native language? What do you constantly say? Are you aware of your predominant communication? Because it reflects whether you are world begotten or God begotten. And it's creating a reality for you. That first John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You need to remind, remember, remind yourself of this. That the greater one lives in me. The God of this world has nothing on me. Therefore, when he says, Ye have overcome them. I ask myself, who are the them? them the antichrist who, who deny that Jesus is, is the Christ ye, have, ye are of God and have overcome them, them who? the false prophets of hell who proclaim the will of the God of sickness and diseases, a prophet is an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of a God, of God so if it is false it means that the prophet is proclaiming the will of a false God and today our text is telling us you have overcome them them, the false prophet of childbearing, proclaiming the will of the God of barrenness. You have overcome them because you are of God. Them, the false prophet of business, proclaiming the will of the God of failure. Ye are of God and have overcome them. Them who? The false prophet of wealth and abundance, proclaiming the will of the God of poverty and wealth. The word of God is now your mother tongue. When you understand that, you will understand why First John 4 can say, ye have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in the world. And Revelation will tell you how you overcome them. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. So today I came to encourage us. That if what we constantly say is not a reflection of our nativity and reality in God. You are not just speaking the wrong language. You are speaking the enemy's language. And in speaking the enemy's language, you are empowering the enemy to walk against you. Lying is native to the devil. Making decrees is native to you. But not just any decree. The repetition of the decrees of the one who is the chief overcomer. The Bible is your native language. The word of God is your mother tongue. When you, when you, when you repeat those lies, the proclamation of the false prophets, of health, of business, of academics, proclaiming the will of the prince of this age, when you repeat them, what you are doing is that you are, you are decreeing them and enacting them in your life. The God begotten has a language. The world begotten has a language. Your native language, your mother tongue has to be the word of God. That no matter how praised you are to the world, you speak what God is saying, not how you are feeling. Because the greater one lives in you. And when you open your mouth, you are creating a reality. So if you repeat what... The prince of this age is speaking through his prophets to you. You are good for nothing. Say, I'm good for nothing. You just gave it authority. The world begotten. We live in a world, a world-driven realm. The kingdom of darkness understands this. The prophets of darkness, they understand this. That's why they constantly proclaim. The God begotten has to awaken and constantly decree and constantly repeat. Not just any word. Not your feelings. Because it's a reality that you have overcome. But it's also a reality that you have to keep overcoming things because we are in the world. And the secret to continually overcoming, Amplify said, habitually overcoming, is in the word of your testimony. The blood of the Lamb has already done. It's God, Jesus is not going to die a second time. So the word of God is your native language. Cultivate the habit of speaking your native language the language of your nativity in every situation as you go home today i want you to examine yourself listen to your predominant thoughts 
your predominant communication, what you constantly say, is it a reflection of your reality as a God begotten? Is it a reflection of your reality as an overcomer? Or is it a reflection of a reality, the reality of the world that you have been defeated and you are bound to die? If what you say is not reflecting, if you're living, you're being, you're speaking, you're doing, is not coming from your nativity in God and reflecting your reality as an overcomer, it's time to change. This is a wake-up call that you are the God begotten. You have overcome the world but then you are meant to keep overcoming habitually, constantly. And the secret is in what you say. Whether you are sleeping or dreaming, so soak in the language of your nativity that even in the dream, you say back not what you feel, not what you think, but what the chief overcomer says about you. Let us rise and speak the language of the God begotten this morning together as we affirm the word of God. Say, I am God begotten. I am an overcomer. Say it like you understand. I speak the language of an overcomer. I live the life of an overcomer. The mightier one lives in me. Say it. I am of God. I have overcome the world. I am the God begotten. I am above the evil one. I am a being of love. I am brought forth by Christ. I do not serve sin. For it is not in my new nature to practice and parade sin. Wickedness and hate cannot spring from me. I am kept and protected by Jesus himself. I have a living hope. I am the God begotten. I am a world conqueror. I am triumphant over everything opposed to God. I am a native of a different kingdom. I see act and speak from God's perspective I cannot be enslaved by the customs opinions or interests of this world I am the God begotten I am a native of the government of heaven I have the seed the nature, the life of God in me I live, think, talk, and act as a God begotten. My name is written in the journals of heaven. I have the conquering power to bring the world to its knees. I am the God begotten. I have overcome the things that afflict the blood begotten. I have conquered the things that affect the flesh begotten. I am victorious over the things that are sexually transmitted. I am not a slave to lust. I prevail over gender specific infirmities and problems. I triumph over the negative limitations of my bloodline. I am the God begotten. I am a descendant of Yahweh. I have overcome the world. Open your mouth and begin to mention the things you have overcome. The evil one, the systems, the cultures, the influences, the things you have overcome. Take this confession back home and look at all of them. Every single line is a reality that you have in God as a God begotten. Every single line takes you into a brand new life. So begin to speak, I am the God begotten. I am victorious in the victory of Christ. I am victorious over sin and death. I am victorious over tribulation and distress. I am victorious over persecution and famine. I am of God. I have overcome the world. I am victorious over principalities and powers. 
There is nothing that can pluck me from the hand of my God. I am the God begotten. I have everything that I need for life and godliness. Open your mouth and celebrate God who has begotten you in himself.